Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of this icy scene. Well, the background is icy, but the foreground has a lot of love in it. So I hope that you enjoy seeing this come together from beginning to end. I will release some slow down versions of some of this footage to my patrons so that they can watch me in real time. But also do check out other videos here on my YouTube channel if you'd like to learn more about Soft Pastel. I would really appreciate if you would hit the like button as well and please do subscribe for all my future content. Hope you enjoy. So I'm working on pastel mat paper for this. You can get so much detail on pastel mat and it's quite a large scale at 27 inches wide. So lots of room for detail. Although I did find it still was a struggle to get all of the detail in the ice itself. And not to mention that the two figures in the foreground, their faces worked out quite small on this scale. So even though it's a big painting, there's a lot of space in the painting and then other areas where it's really packed full of detail, so quite a contrast in certain areas. And I really enjoyed this challenge because I haven't actually painted ice before. I've painted snowy scenes before, but I've never had a real go at a big iceberg like this, so I was really thrilled to get this commission. And one of my favourite artists, another unison pastel artist, Zaria Foreman. If you haven't seen her work already, then I advise you go check it out on Instagram. She paints pretty much nothing else, only icebergs, and her work is on a giant scale. So thanks to Zaria for getting Unison to create these beautiful ocean blues. And those are the colours that I'm mostly using in this piece. Thanks to her designing these colours for her work it made this piece a lot easier for me. So a mixture of lovely ocean blues, but also I used a lot of lilacs, light lilacs. That's actually a light lilac sky in the background, so quite a surreal scene. I've never had the opportunity to visit an iceberg myself, so it really does look like something from another planet, something quite magical about it. So I really had to take my time and figure out each section as I went. The iceberg itself is really just a big chunk of shapes and colour gradients, but each little section took a lot of attention and was really time consuming. I spent many, many hours just on the icebergs themselves. And that's partly because it was a bit of a learning curve for me, so I'm used painting people and animals, so fur comes second nature to me by now. But when it's something that you haven't painted before, it certainly makes you slow down your progress. You really have to use a lot of brain power on this sort of thing. But I enjoyed it immensely and I would love to get to paint some more ice in future. So besides the people being quite small and tricky, I knew at this stage of the painting that what was going to take me the most amount of time really was just figuring out all the little uh, nooks and crannies on each of the icebergs. It's such a subtle palette of colours. You've got to create a lot of contrast on the iceberg but without it being too dark in certain areas, so it's quite a limited tonal range, and that can be really tricky. So hopefully over on my Patreon channel, I'll be able to make a couple of videos based on the iceberg here, showing how I created the subtle tonal differences. And you can see, as always, I'm still working from pretty much from dark to light, laying down the darker colours first, even though they're not very dark in this case. But laying those down first, trying to find all of the cracks and the darker contrasted areas on the iceberg. 
and then bringing that up gradually using the lighter blues, light lilacs, right up to white, but trying to be quite sparing with pure white so that I don't just end up with a big lump of white on the page. So I really tried to pull a lot of color out of the photo reference. Find as many shades of those lovely ocean blues as I could. And then a really satisfying part was creating the very subtle reflection of the iceberg in the water below. So I do always love to get a very different challenge on my easel. And this certainly was different for me. As I said, I'm more comfortable when I'm normally painting animal portraits. And I do love painting landscapes. But this took a very different kind of thought process for me. And I can now totally appreciate how Zaria puts a lot of time and effort into her giant uh, ice scapes, I suppose we should call them. And she works on it such a grand scale that I can imagine it's quite satisfying to create that detail when you've got a lot more space to work with. So I did find the scale of this quite tricky because even though the painting's big overall, there's not really a lot of space for the detail in certain areas. And you can see the odd time flashing up that I'm making use of my pan pastel applicators. So those lovely little handles with the different shaped sponges on the end. And I find those really useful on pastel matte paper especially for when you want to do some really precise blending and you want to just move the pigment around. So not a lot of use of the pastel pencil this far into the painting. More just using my lovely big unison sticks and sometimes those little pointed blenders to help move the pigment into place. But I was pretty happy with how the iceberg turned out. And once I got this far into the painting, I was pretty confident that I could make it a really cool painting, excuse the pun. But it really was the unknown part that I was most worried about with this. I have created humans on this scale quite a few times, and I really quite enjoy the challenge of capturing a likeness on quite a small scale. So this part didn't worry me too much. So onto the clothing. And um, because they're standing, I think in the photo reference it's raining a little bit. But I didn't even attempt to try and add any raindrops or anything of the sort. It was enough just to try and make their clothing look quite wet. So I really enjoyed the challenge of creating the creases starting again, working from dark to light. Adding in the dark creases first, then blocking in the rest of the color. Then starting to find some of those nice shiny highlights. But before going too far into the clothing, while I still have some place to lean my hand, I decided to make a start on the first face. This face was to be the easier of the two, simply because the guy's wearing sunglasses. So it literally meant I didn't have to get too much of a likeness. It's always tricky to create eyes on this scale, so my full attention went into the structure of the nose, the lips, the overall face shape becomes really important on this scale. And you're really just looking for the biggest planes of the structure of the face. I think that's why I like working on this scale sometimes, because it forces you to just look for the bigger shapes and the things that are most important to capturing the person's likeness. So with the first face complete, I start adding some of those 
very satisfying bits of reflection and shine on the clothing. All in all, this piece took me just over 20 hours to complete, I think, in the end. And that's not including uh, sketching it out and the many breaks that I took during the painting process to stand back and have a look and really think about what to do next. So my painting footage doesn't always represent exactly how long it took me, but the footage that you're watching here totaled just around 20 hours. So with the man complete, over onto his partner. And for sure this was to be the trickier of the two faces to work on. No sunglasses to hide behind. Had to really try and get a good likeness here. And when I zoomed in on the photo reference, it wasn't 100% clear. I had to lighten the photo reference a little bit just to bring out more detail. And it became a little bit grainy as I zoomed in to try and see the smaller details. But I could definitely see enough of both faces to try and get their features correct. And I just had to hope for the best with her eyes. And I think by the end, having spent a full day on and off just working on this small area, I was pretty happy by the end with the likeness that I managed to get. But you can see that I'm making use of a lot more of the pastel pencil, sharpening them nice and fine to get a very precise point. Still doing a lot of the blocking in on the face with smaller shards of the bigger sticks, but certainly those pastel pencils become very useful in the, in the finer details. So onto her clothing again, nice and shiny like it's wet. And just before I finish her figure, I need to continue with those pebbles, that pebble beach that they're standing on. So at this point, it's just pretty repetitive working my way across the beach, laying down a base layer of color. Just lots of little random dots trying to make it look as random as the beach did in the photo reference. Again, working those dark colours first. Then coming in with my mid-tones and up to the lighter colours. Leaving some gaps just to create some shadow on the beach. And then, because I get that little area that's behind them finished, I can work on, finally, on the figures. So this was a real challenge to work on. Every part of it was quite difficult, but I really enjoyed it. Something fresh and different on my easel is always welcome. So I hope that you've enjoyed seeing the full progress of this. Please do leave me a comment hit the like button, even better, subscribe to my YouTube channel here so that you can see lots more of my content. And also consider checking me out over on Patreon, where you'll find all of my full-length tutorials to teach you all of my pastel tricks. Until next time, happy pastling!